So you, you talked about making sure you're getting the value. How do you keep track of how much money you're actually making on a case? Uh, I mean, there's hours and stuff. Do you have systems for that to make sure you're actually making, uh, you know, making income on a case, not just like losing money on it? Right. That's a great question. It's something like I struggled with initially. Um, like most immigration attorneys, we charge probably 85 to 90 percent of our work is on a fixed fee basis. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we have fee schedules that we put out to the clients. But I don't look at individual cases, John. What I look at is department productivity. So rather than siloing the attorneys to work with specific clients, mm -hmm. I, I have departments based on case type. And then every time we start a new case, we flag the case type and the department that it's in. Uh, so for example, like let's say you're doing an intercompany transferee that goes to the department that does the L's and the E's. Um, and what I will do is every quarter, I look at how much income that department has made based on an assumption regarding cost of overhead and then the salaries involved. And then I have profit margin targets that I'd like to adhere to. Interesting. So, you know, I don't do billable hours. I don't look at individual staff members productivity. As far as me running the practice, each one of these practice leaders reports into me mm -hmm. and I make them responsible for the productivity of their department. So if they have a legal assistant that's really performing well and they're getting a lot of value out of them, I'll raise and bonus them accordingly at their annual review based on the attestations of the attorney and then looking at what that department's profitability is to see how much wiggle room from our target number we actually have. Mm -hmm. In the same respect, I'm not going to know if an individual legal assistant is not performing well unless that department head tells me. Yeah. So I'm really trying to like limit the input of people to me as far as management and then empower them to manage the people underneath of them mm -hmm. and then using these departmental metrics to determine overall profitability of a unit as it relates to the firm as a whole. Excellent. And so you don't have billable hours. I'm, I'm, you know, that's probably the bane of the existence of most immigration, the idea of billable hours. So you've got did away with that. You just expect, you know, things to get done. And if things are not getting done, they look at it. Yeah. I mean, or I, the ACC department sees how much work they're taking in. They, they, they'll they come back and they say, need more help. We need to hire somebody. They just bring that up to you. Yeah. And then I look at the metrics in that department. And I'll say like, look, man, like there's a disconnect here because your profitability rate is this. That's two points below what we expect. Mm -hmm. If you're having trouble getting the work done within this methodology, then one of two things is happening. One, we're not charging enough for your type of case. Or two, you have people on your team that are not being productive. Yeah. And what about all these RFEs that happen? Are you starting to charge for RFEs? Uh, because that's increasing hours and time and, and it's just... I'm assuming you're getting them too, because everyone must be getting these crazy RFEs. Yeah, no, no, we get, our, we get RFEs. <laughs> um, I, like, so if they're simple RFEs, we don't charge. You know, if they're asking for like, you know, a little bit of material here. And my rule, honestly, John, is if it's less than two hours of work, we don't charge. Yeah, I'm same here. I, I give two hours free, yeah. Yeah, and if it's more than two hours, then we have a, I quote, a fixed fee. And in our retainer agreements, we cap the amount that you pay for an RFE it's pretty much 80% of the price that you paid for the original filing. So we cap it Interesting. because a lot of businesses want to know what their spend is going to yeah. be like in a worst case scenario. Uh, I'll tell you, like I take a hit on our fees. I think we all do. It's yeah, just like inevitable, but in the same respect, like, you know, if we charge an H one B at a certain rate and it goes through smoothly, we're going to make more than our targeted percentage. So, you know, the pricing is somewhat of a gut feel kind of thing. I mean, I do look at it empirically every year when we set our fee schedules and our target fee schedules. I do that in January. For my larger corporate clients, I have them on annual retainers and I just, you know, have them do a new retainer and then I give them the fee schedule for that year. Mm -hmm. um, certain things change like the public charge assessment on family-based cases and a 485 is like, we're charging more for that. You know, we're charging a supplemental fee. Like I'm not going to, take that on the on the yeah, chin it's so, a hard one today it's just it's like a mortgage never, application yeah. it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. thank you for listening to this episode for previous episodes and more please visit the podcast page of our website immigrationlawyerstoolbox.com 
You can also visit the Toolbox YouTube and LinkedIn pages to catch the video versions of these podcasts, news updates, and a lot more. Immigration lawyers can also contact me to join the private Facebook page. The email is info at immigrationlawyerstoolbox.com.